Samsung's flagship phones have a hidden feature called Dex, which essentially allows you to replace your desktop or laptop with your phone. And now that phones are more powerful than some laptops were just a few years ago, Dex is becoming more and more feasible, and to some, they claim that you can even use it entirely to replace your laptop or your desktop. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm going to lock my laptop in a closet to find out how real this actually is and answer the question of, can you do everything I normally do on a laptop, but with my phone? I mean, think about it, this would be pretty great. It has all of my accounts, it has NFC and GPS, which my laptop do not have. It also has all my Bluetooth devices already connected, and it'd be pretty cool to roll up to a meeting, no laptop, plug in your phone, and just like present from there. It's a promising idea, but skepticism is definitely still warranted. Let's start off with the basics of, of what is Dex? How does it even work? Now for this particular desktop setup, all I'm doing is I'm actually using a hub that's meant for tablets, but any hub would work. You can get them for $20 on Amazon. As long as you have the ability to plug in USB Type-C on one side and on the other side HDMI, then it's gonna work. I chose this one in particular because it also has a power input so I can charge my phone. As you can see up there, my phone is currently charging and I can plug in other things to this as well. SD cards inside, USB type A, different things like that. All right, so this is Samsung DeX. Just plugging into a monitor, you can see we have a full desktop interface here. And kind of across the bottom, this is familiar, it looks a lot like Windows. On the bottom left, you have kind of your start menu equivalent. These are all your apps you have available. You also have the ability to lock DeX or exit DeX if you wanted to. If you hit that one next to that, that is your search bar. Uh, so it allows you to search anything on your phone. I also hit the, the Windows key on a keyboard. That'll bring this up, like I said, down a little start menu. And you can just start typing from here. So if I wanna open up Brave, I just type in that, and that'll open. you can hit enter and it'll open that. Also, if you right click this, much like Windows, allows you to you know clean up the page, change the wallpaper, and change the screen zoom. Then next to that, we have all the apps that are currently open. We have our home button there that brings us back to the desktop. Going over to the middle, these are all your apps that are open. You can have a ton of apps open as well, and you can right click them, uh, you know, change if you wanna pin them, if you wanna close them. I can open up settings and I could lock it, I could snap it to the right side or the left side or wherever I want. There is, however, a limit on how many apps you're able to open at the same time. So if I go and I try to open up clock, for example, It'll open up the clock, but we now have five windows open. The sixth one is actually being minimized, so I'll open another one just to kind of show you what I'm talking about there. So if I open up this, you saw that last one over there minimized. So I can close this and I can open up other ones, but you can see across the bottom we'll have them. However, it just you can only show five at a time on the screen. Still five at a time on one screen, I think is pretty substantial. I'm never multitasking with that many windows open at once. Additionally, as you can see on the bottom, we're able to have multiple of one app open. So we have two different Google Docs open right now. I can check out either one of them. And I was genuinely impressed by how many apps are actually optimized for Dex. So looking at like uh, YouTube right here, if we make this, okay, so this is interesting. I can't see my cursor. I kind of hate when that happens. But here you can see it's mostly optimized because it's meant for tablets. Like this is the same aspect ratio as a tablet. It works really well. So let's close YouTube. And there are very few apps, if any, that I found that just don't open up at all. Even apps that you wouldn't expect to be optimized, say 18 birdies, for example, still stretches out to look pretty good. It's, it's, it's essentially just the phone app, just a little wider right here. Continuing on with the UI tour, on the bottom right, we have screenshots, we have volume controls next to that. Um, there's notifications over here, your connectivity. I'm currently connecting three devices. So I have my keyboard, my mouse, uh, and my watch. And right now I'm actually working on planning a trip that's coming up in a couple months. So I'm gonna use Samsung internet and I'm gonna do a little bit of research. Now what I recommend doing is by default, this might be on mobile site. And so if we just search anything, let's just say Olympics, Olympics, uh, Olympics right here, you'll see it shows up as if it were a mobile site. It's very stretched out. It looks kind of weird. It's still totally usable. But what I recommend doing when you're on Dex is going to desktop site, and then it'll be much more optimized for this wide aspect ratio. The only complaint that I noticed so far is I usually use dark mode on my phone. I had to switch over to light mode because if you look over here on my monitor, if I switch to dark mode, uh, you actually cannot see the mouse. Like you'd see my cursor, when it's covering right there in the middle, you can see that, and then it completely disappears anywhere else. So I don't know why they don't change the color of the cursor. It seems like a really easy fix to make that, to make that white, but uh, unfortunately I have to make this light mode and that will in turn make my phone in light mode. I haven't had it in light mode in a couple of years, so I don't know, I kind of like it a little bit, but I wish I had that option to have two different settings for Dex and for my phone UI. 
Now, one other thing to note is if you're using DeX and you don't have a hub like this, I recommend at least getting a wireless charger because it can drain your battery very quickly if you don't have a constant source of power. Also, I did notice that uh, if you're charging it like on a wireless charging pad, it can obviously get a little bit warm, but otherwise, no matter how much I do with this, it doesn't really seem to get that warm. And I do have a case on the back as well, so you would expect it to trap a little bit more heat. Honestly, it handles this load very, very well, and I haven't noticed any additional heat on there. All right, so this is the second setup we have available. This is the Nextox XL. So sometimes I like doing my emails like while I'm eating breakfast or something. I only have a desktop at my house, I have an iMac. So having something like this would allow me to, you know, do my emails in other parts of my house. Now, this is a particularly interesting piece of hardware. Nextox makes a bunch of different ones. This is not sponsored, trust me. I don't even recommend buying this, um, but I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this product. So this thing folds down, feels, looks like a laptop, but it doesn't actually work like a laptop. You have to plug in your phone and then it runs Samsung DeX. But there are some positives starting off with that. We have a touch screen on here. It's a 15.6 inch display. We have a full keyboard and a trackpad on here. It does have speakers, really bad speakers, like my phone speakers are better, so I never use this anyway. And it does have a battery, so it does work like a laptop when you just plug in your phone. There are downsides though. The display is probably the worst display I've seen in the past 20 years. Uh, it's like incredibly low, just bad color, low brightness. You can't really use it outside. But regardless, I'm going to use it with Samsung DeX, at least for right now, to see, uh, you know, just to kind of see what I could do with this. All right, so I've been working for about an hour or so right now, and I have to say a couple things I noticed. I, I mean, I've used DeX before, but I'm very impressed by the speed. This is the S24 Ultra I'm using right now. Um, it is just really keeping up with everything I'm doing. I have about eight windows open at the same time, multitasking, the hotkeys work, so I'm able to switch between windows. I can snap them to the left or the right. Overall, it's really effective for writing video scripts, researching, so I'm doing a lot of searching on my browser, managing emails, managing Google Drive stuff, that kind of online stuff, and even like, you know, trading stocks and stuff, works really well, which to be honest is probably the majority of what most people do on a laptop. So the actual back end of like the horsepower of it really is not a limitation at all for the day-to-day -day stuff that, that I'm doing so far. A couple other things I did notice on here related to the hardware, I wish this laptop had better hardware. I don't really use a trackpad at all. Um, it's very, it's very low quality. It's in a weird spot. So I find that I don't really, it doesn't work for me, but I am using the touchscreen a lot. That works quite well. The keyboard obviously helps because I don't need to type on my phone. So from a phone standpoint, like you can type significantly faster using this device. There are some things in DeX that are a little bit quirky that take some time to kind of learn. So it's kind of a mix between a tablet UI and a desktop interface. Like you have windows, you can move them around and everything, but some things open up in a new window. Like if, if I'm on Gmail going through my emails and I want to respond to one, it opens up a new window for that response, which is nice in one sense that I can go back and read the original email and scroll through and have you know the response open next to it. But in another sense, it's just not what I'm used to on a desktop. So things like that definitely have a bit of a learning curve. Additionally, while most hotkeys work, there are some that don't really work. I'm gonna try printing in a couple minutes and see how that works uh, because you can actually plug in a number of things on the ports on the side of this next dock, which is also really nice that you have kind of a hub to plug in more things into your phone. But also like the volume controls on, on the keyboard, unfortunately only control the volume of this speaker. When I'm using like my Galaxy Buds, I have to either use the on earbud controls of course, or on my phone, um, or go down to the bottom corner and use the interface to change the volume. The buttons on the keyboard you think would change the volume of whatever's playing, but it, they don't, they only work for this speaker. I also have to say that because it's plugged in, it is charging my phone the entire time. I, I really like how like you can work in one situation and then when you get up and leave, one, you just unplug, your music's still playing through your earbuds, everything's saved, everything is coming with you and you can pick up exactly where you left off on any other device. So if you have like this next dock at home, you have a, you know, a desktop style setup at work, you can plug this in either one and everything comes with you and your phone is always charged up. In addition, you can actually use this next dock wirelessly. I am not doing that because there's just far too much lag for my liking there. The touch screen, you have to pair to that, you pair to the keyboard, and then you use this as a wireless charger, and you also pair to the device for a 
wireless display. So there's a lot of like pairing that goes on for that. And like I said, just a little bit too much lag for my liking. This short little cable, absolutely zero lag. It works tremendously. Um, and I just personally like that a lot better. All right, so next up, sometimes I need to print things, whether it's like mailing in taxes or I don't know, whatever. Sometimes you just gotta print like return labels and stuff. So if you're gonna print with this, you don't by default have the drivers. There's no easy way to get the drivers for your printer on this phone. If you're doing wired printing, a lot of printers are wireless, but mine are always wired. And the, there is actually an app you can use to use wired printers with DEX. It's called NOKO Print, so it's N-O-K-O -O Print. Uh, there's a lot of ads on here, but if you just plug it in, plug in any printer and then open up NOCO Print, actually prompts you to open NOCO Print, uh, then it'll recognize your printer, it'll install the driver that it needs, and uh, from what I could tell, it actually is able to print. Like I've, I've done some tests, uh, it can print web pages, you just put in the URL, so I could use the hotkeys to switch alt tab between different windows, copy, paste the link, and print uh, just a web page. I could also print something from my files, from Google Drive, and I can print photos as well. All right, so like I said, uh, it's pretty nice you can unplug this. I'm gonna go back to my office now and get some more work done on a larger desktop style monitor. All right, so you might have some questions about what if you're using this not with just browsing the web or typing documents? What if you are either like printing or if you're on video calls or other things that people do very frequently using a computer? Well, I'm gonna do a quick test right now. Let's open up Google Meet. It doesn't really matter. You could use Teams, you could use whatever, um, but let's go to Google Meet and see how it reacts with this. So I'm going to just make a little meeting right now, just myself in there. And it looks like by default, it's using, it's using my phone camera, which is good. I don't have a camera on this monitor, but it is in a vertical aspect ratio. Again, the camera's sitting upright, so that makes sense. But let's try turning it horizontal and see if it goes to a landscape mode. Okay, so it looks like it is, like my phone's horizontal, the video is, still vertical, which is not ideal, um, but let's kind of see, okay, so that's not gonna be good. We're gonna have to use this in portrait mode, but I do have one other idea. On Apple devices, you can use continuity camera. It works really well. You use the rear camera for better video quality, especially in low light. Uh, let's see if we can turn the camera around here. So I'm gonna turn it around, and I'm just gonna turn my phone around on the stand, and I'm gonna have to move this to kind of in front of my, my device. And there we go, now I have better video quality. I think that's actually pretty substantial. And uh, that's something I could definitely see myself using quite a bit, using the rear lens on this, just by turning, like I don't really look at my phone when DeX is being used. So if you're gonna do that, like might as well use a better camera. But again, turning it horizontal does not actually reorient the aspect ratio of the video. All right, so using DeX to replace a laptop. There were some pros and some cons to this. The pros, I was very, very impressed by how fast this was. This is legitimately capable of doing most of what I do my, with my laptop. Checking emails, browsing the internet, multitasking with different windows, making spreadsheets. Like, it can do a lot of stuff. As far as video editing goes and, and more advanced tasks, you're going to be limited by the software that is out there. So this is still running Android. And as of right now, you're not gonna have a real heavy lifter like Adobe Premiere Pro running its normal version on Android. You could totally use something like CapCut and get the job done with that, but there were also some other positives here as well. We have things like GPS, we've got cellular connectivity so I can leave home without needing to hotspot and not needing a second plan for my laptop to be connected. Like you always have internet because it's just your phone. You also have GPS on here. Like I said, we have NFC. Uh, it has an S Pen being the S24 Ultra. So signing documents was a breeze. I didn't have to like airdrop it to my iPad and then sign it there and then send it back. You could just sign it on your phone because like, like I said, it's, it's one device that, that has a pen and, and, and a touch screen as well. It also has great cameras that are completely mobile. So scanning documents is very easy. And otherwise, like the UI is really quite good. I'm, I'm kind of impressed by how much more optimized the apps are compared to the last time I really did a legitimate test with DeX. The downsides, however, though, are the hardware limitations, kind of a big one. If you're using a desktop setup like I've been using for probably most of this video, the beginning and, and later in the video as well, uh, it does a great job. I have no complaints at all, even nice display. But if you wanna use this as a laptop type setup, Nextdoc is really one of the few companies that makes products for that. Unfortunately, I haven't found one that, first of all, was at a very good price and decent quality, but most importantly, 
like the quality on them just wasn't quite up to the par that I was hoping for, you can get the job done, but it feels very much like a second rate experience compared to just using a laptop. And if you're gonna spend $399 on that, like you could just buy a Chromebook for that price and it would probably be a lot better. Also, there was a learning curve with the DeX software side of things. Uh, specifically, like I mentioned before, some things opening up in new windows, like I'm used to always using YouTube on uh, my browser and you can do that here, but you get a better experience with the YouTube app. Other things have their own app as well. If you're using Gmail, that's usually in its own app. If you want to type an email, that's gonna be a separate window that pops up as well. And there is that limitation of five windows at a time that are open. The other ones are still running, they're just minimized. So like it's not really a big deal there, but it's something that if you want to have five open at the same time, maybe you wanna have multiple displays besides just one, you're kinda limited on decks. Like you're really only gonna be using this with one display at a time. And the last drawback that I really noticed with this, as I mentioned earlier on, is that there's not a huge separation of settings between dex mode and your actual phone. Light mode, dark mode was an example where the cursor would completely disappear. But otherwise I would like to see almost like a separate I know it's kind of a separate UI, but I want a separate set of settings for this. Kind of like you can see with some folding phones where like the outside and the inside have different settings. I would love to see that even more advanced with this. So it feels almost like a separate device and you can really tailor in what you want for DeX and what you want for your phone. Yes, you can change the background for one or the other and you can change some settings, but I want all like many, many more settings to be independent on DeX. But yeah, answering the question of can I replace my laptop with this? Me personally, as somebody who works on videos a lot, I'm moving files around, I'm editing videos, I can't do this. But I think for a lot of people out there, especially anybody who might be buying a Chromebook uh, or just wants like a second device around the house or, or maybe you just do basic tasks, you don't need to edit videos or do 3D modeling or anything like that, then yeah, this is completely a viable option. Like I'm very impressed by how practical this is. Like for example, if you have kids and they don't have their own laptops, maybe you don't wanna buy a bunch of laptops, but you have like one monitor and maybe they have their own phones, they could each have their own interface with all the same you know, child restrictions on there and everything like that. And you could plug yours in and have your settings, your files, everything there in one setup that is easy to just kind of hotspot and move between the different setups. So I think there's a lot of use cases here. I think a lot of people are gonna be very creative with this. I know people are already. Um, but let me know what you think about Samsung DeX and kind of this prospect of replacing laptops with phones. Is this something you would ever do? Do you think, like, what do you think it needs to actually make you do that? If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.